Geology. Geology. Yeah, I've got three daughters. Oh. Hey, Olive. And third one, who's that? That's Hazel. Olive knows. What do I do then, girls? What's, what's my job? You work on rocks and more uh, Olive, just one second. Olive, take that out of your mouth. I better put these headphones back on because otherwise we might hear the piano. And what about your wife? I'm not sure. When, I, I was making pizza sauce, so she might be just making sure that the pizza sauce is okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what is, for you, sustainable geoscience, and what is the competing other concept that uh, you can find hostile or yeah. controversial? Yeah, so I think, I think sustainable geoscience, for me, is where we look at the role geoscience plays in science and society. And more importantly, or in addition to that, is how it how it represents itself responsibly. So what it's doing in terms of the betterment of humankind. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's a lot of things that have been done in geosciences where people are considering the betterment of humankind as let's say captured in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So let's say water and security and clean water. There's a bunch of hydrologists and geochemists who've been looking at this problem for decades and decades, and they don't need a title like sustainable geoscience to, to, um, to crystallize their work and the value of their work. So they don't need this title. But I think what ge sustainable geoscience does is it provides a kind of a, a framework within which to look at how those things are all connected. And also I think it gives all of those disparate subjects it gives a home for those disparate subjects and a way to badge it for the for the broader public. The people I've come across who are most hostile towards the term are petroleum explorers, right? Because they see it, sustainable geosciences purely as a way of pivoting geosciences away from, from fossil fuel location and production. And they just see it as another um, downward pressure on, on, the, on the industry. I have hopefully always made clear that in the energy transition, we are still going to require fossil fuel derived energy. How much of that we're gonna need is gonna vary by um, geography. So I think it's important to make it clear that I still see benefit to subsurface understanding being applied to fossil fuel extraction as well. So longer term though, I think sustainable geosciences is a, is a way of saying, well, how do we pivot away ultimately from a fossil fuel based energy economy, I would say. I would sort of go on record as saying that, but I'm not saying it should be by next Thursday. And I'm not saying it's gonna happen at the same rate everywhere. Uh, Chris, your title is still today, in your title is attached the name of an oil company, uh, Equinor, mm -hmm. the former Statoil, uh, Equinor Professor of Basin Analysis. And uh, you also, you work uh, for an oil company for a couple of years and more than 10 companies they have sponsor and they still support economically your research. How, how do you feel having collaborated and work for the oil and gas industry for roughly 10 years or more than 10 years uh, now that you are in this situation? I feel relaxed about it, to be honest. I think, you know, what people have done before and what they're doing now can still allow them to be progressive in their thinking about what might happen in the future. And I've just said that I think that petroleum resource location and extraction will play a part of the energy transition. I think, you know, in my own political viewpoint, my own geopolitical viewpoint, to kind of deny certain parts of the world access to world leading technology and expertise that might allow them to improve their health and produce and improve educational standards in those places as a function of an energy based economy and a fossil fuel energy based economy i can sort of square that you know i can sort of i can make i can get my head around it and i agree there's the tension we just talked about undoubtedly over the next few years i'll probably look at bits of my fossil fuel company you know uh, sponsored research and, and feel less comfortable with it and at that moment, then I can say, well, I'm not prepared to take this money. I'm not prepared to do this or that. But Dan, I mean, I just see it as part of our evolution of thought as individuals and as human beings. What, what is, uh, Chris, your piece in the puzzle that you are going to try to create when you move um, to this uh, chair of sustainable geoscience? 
Yeah, so like I said earlier on, I think part of it is related to research. So it's like what we do and how we're applying it and how we're badging it and how we're taking it out to the public. I think that outreach and engagement bit is a really important thing in this sustainable geoscience idea, because I think it's really important to go out to the people who are being impacted by what we're doing and telling them about how we're doing it and why we're doing it. In fact, asking them and, and working with them to create projects that will benefit them, right? So it's not like, oh, I think this is a great idea, I'm gonna do this. It's actually going out and, and talking to people locally, be it around Manchester or be it on the other side of the planet, like what are the arising um, environmental concerns or geoscience concerns you have and how can we tackle that? So I think that communication and, and, and it's a cheesy word, but co-creation of projects is an important piece. Another thing we've not really talked about, which I know a lot of people are very passionate about, and I am as well, is this, it, within this, this, this idea of sustainable geosciences is, is the, the, the past reputation of geosciences. Okay, so there's lots of, we, we have touched on this, but conduct by certain companies and certain geoscience researchers in paleontology is one that I read a lot about on social media where there's been a kind of imperialist approach to that science you know we'll come over here we'll do this thing with your rocks or your data we won't include any of your scientists we won't leave any legacy in terms of educating and training people there or incorporating you in this paper or this presentation and then we'll leave and then it will benefit us in the global north and you people here will be you know just thank you very much for letting us come here and i think for me having discussions around that and and saying look historically this has been not best practice, this practice has been damaging and we can do a lot better than that. I think that's a really important part of this, which I'm really, really keen on, on learning more my, about myself, but also when I've got to improve learning is talking to other people. You maybe have heard about decolonizing the curriculum, but that's something we need to tackle as well. So by going to our curricula and actually saying, okay, what examples of geos or where are we going to draw examples of geoscience principles from who are we going to show in the slides doing geosciences who are we going to have on our reading lists is it just going to be white north north northern hemisphere scientists who are all male or are we going to think more openly and expansively about who is being represented in in those different bits of how we teach who's who's teaching who are we hiring to teach geoscience Who's, who's in the classroom acting as TAs, teaching assistants? Having a much more holistic view of everything we do in geosciences is, for me, and it might not be for everybody, is part of this notion of sustainable geoscience. You know, and, you know, and, I've, and I, don't want, I don't want to say sustainable geoscience is a new thing nobody's ever heard of. It's, it's, that's garbage. Of course, you know, it's been done, but it's just been done under a different name. And I think it's a great way of crystallizing bits of what we do and badging it and taking it back out to the public and policymakers and saying, look, we people who look at the structure, dynamics, the chemistry, the physics, the biology of the earth, we do this really awesome stuff and it's really important and people should take it seriously. You know, and if that allows us to do that better, then I'm all for having that tweak in the branding. And I am super passionate about making sure we have a diverse set of voices going out and having those conversations. That's like, you can keep the name or get rid of the name, but as long as we diversify the voices, that's if that's the end where we get to with this, then that's that for me is going to be very pleasing. Yeah.